Hello and welcome to the Global Podcast. My name is Adosal Sloth and we are here to talk a little bit about what's going on in the world of Global Conflict, a battlefield community playing on PC every week. You can go ahead and visit us at global-conflict.org to know more. With me today we have Captain Carp. Hello. Mr Lake Fisher. Hello. And The One. Hello. Quite a small collection of people we have today. Uh, today, as well, is was the second scrim of this campaign number three. Uh, Carp, how do you think that went? Well, I think it went uh, pretty well, but we can do better from the lucky number seven side, I suppose. Yeah. I suspect Lake Fisher was quite happy about the results of one particular map. Yeah, well, if you didn't know, it was my first time FC today, and it has so happened that I was against Sloth. And maybe, perhaps, I might have won by a considerable amount of tickets. It was my generosity, obviously. Didn't want a, a new FC to, you know, get battered the first time, so I thought I'd, I'd let you win. Oh, no, um, I think that's maybe why uh, when JJ FC'd as well. He won. Uh, I'm not sure your office call is the strongest, but my office call is the best officer call. Um, the one. How do you went from your perspective as a more grunt orientated person than an officer? I thought it went really, really well. Um, there's a lot of communication going back and forth. Um, very clear as well, which was nice. Um, the squads that I was commanding did a fantastic job. And also the two new um, field commanders did an excellent job. I mean, Lake Fisher, well done, mate. And also to JJ, I mean, his first time he won one. That's very, very impressive. Yeah, I know when I first started FC, I'm fairly sure I got battered for the first few weeks before I managed to win one. So for those Lake Fisher and JJ pulling a win out the first time out, then that's pretty good. Uh, moving on this week for campaign side of things uh, we have the Black Ops is coming back for this campaign so on Tuesday SBT plus 2 for aimed at European people and SBT plus 8 aimed at the Americas uh, we're having smaller matches it will still be Batford 4 uh, but we're playing other modes like Rush and CTF and things like that uh, how are you guys looking forward to that? I know Lake Fish and the One, this is probably your first time going through Black Ops. What are your opinions on what do you think it's going to be like? I think it sounds like a great idea. It'd be nice to play things like Rush and Obliteration in a more tactical environment. Looking really forward to it, actually. Um, it'd be nice to see how it works with a smaller amount of people, which would be very interesting to see. And definitely playing those different type of modes and stuff which is great also for um each team as well it means you can hone your skills in a slightly smaller environment and maybe something a bit more hectic which is uh, always a good thing cop i believe you've uh, been to black ops before uh, what can you, you describe to our newer members what what can they expect from these small matches they can expect some uh, heavy resistance for all and uh, a lot of fun Especially when we are playing other game modes like uh, Rush and Capture the Flag. I was playing, last time I was playing Black Ops, it was on uh, Battlefield 3 C6, and then it was uh, the game modes. I think it's called Air Superiority and Tank Superiority, and those were quite fun, what I can remember. But yeah, that's a lot of fun. Uh, the Black Ops also provide a nice testing ground and introduction ground to newer maps and stuff like the new dragon's teeth maps so is there any dragon teeth maps people would like to see turn up in black ops or maybe in the future into the main campaign all of them yeah all of them especially um car market yeah oh, definitely that uh, one of my favorite maps it's like map. it seems to divide opinion it's, it's kind of like Marmite, because I quite like it, which I was surprised about, because I'm not normally a fan of these closer 
type maps and I mean obviously like in the one you like it as well but in the forums there's been people saying that they didn't like it at all I think I really like it due to the fact of you know it's on three levels and it's close combat which I think would personally suit GC perfectly to be honest with you you know, a lot of communication between the buildings and that lot, and there could be an awful lot of tactics that go on there. It could be very interesting to play it. I feel like it divides opinion because at first glance it's really confusing and there's so many ways to go around. If you, if you look at it in the, if you play it for a while and look at it in the grand scheme of things, you can actually see there's some key routes and stuff. And then you start to get more understanding of the map and you start to like it a lot more. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, there's also the new game mode, the, uh, how was it called, Chain Link, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what are people's opinions of that? I know I've had not much time on it, but... I think that could really, really work for GC, because it's it's very um, flag-specific. Obviously, you've got to chain those links together, so there could be a lot of extra tactics that could be used for that, which I think would be excellent. And also a lot of fiercely fought battles over who's going to break the links. And also on those maps, which is quite nice, there's a lot of flanking routes. So that's another option for you know the officers and commanders on both teams to go and have a look at the um, tactics, etc. for sorting that out for those kind of maps. Definitely. Um, many of them are quite linear, though, I feel, apart from the Sunken Dragon, which... Is kind of curly. That's and another map sure. that divides quite a lot of opinions. Yeah, I like the fact the the evolution in it. You can trigger again and again, so you can raise and lower the height of the water. Yeah, it changes the inside of the restaurant quite a bit. That could work very well if we use that in a battle, though. Just because it's not a huge event, but it's worthy if you're in the restaurant and hold it, particularly from that lower floor. Yeah, you, but you can't move through it quite as fast and it provides, although it does provide attackers alternative entrances to the building. And also you get things like jet skis and everything else that can zip across. So, you know, people seem to be enjoying the new DLC. I had a lot of fun with the, uh, the new riot shield. Just running around while people shoot at you, that's quite fun. Yeah, it's great, apart from it was very in CT when you actually block bullets. The uh, the new weapons seem to be quite popular as well. I know I was running around today being shot a lot by uh, Bulldogs. I don't know how you guys feel about the new weapons. The Bulldog really is the new Scar H, to be honest with you. It's um, extremely powerful and extremely accurate. I was um, not going to have to play the, the uh, CT version of it, so got to play these weapons uh, about two weeks ago. And they're very, very nice. Um, that's one of my favourite weapons. Uh, the other one is the MPX is also a fantastic weapon for the engineer as well. Um, it's got great long range ability, very controllable gun. Uh, the Desert Eagle, it's amazing. And the new sniper rifle, very sneaky. You've got to get used to it if you're a sniper. Um, but a good sniper rifle nonetheless. And I can't remember the other weapon. The Unica. I haven't personally tried that yet. It's uh, it's m- like most of the revolvers, one head, one shot, headshot, one shot, no, one shot to the head is a kill, but uh, it has no trigger delay to it, so it's sort of like the Desert Eagle in that respect. That sounds extremely nice. One thing okay. I am a little bit unsure about at the minute is the um, Wally 2.0 or Wally on steroids, because those things are really powerful. I'm not sure if I like them or not yet. They're powerful, but they have to be used right, because I've only ever seen them once or twice in the few hours I've played actually kill anyone. They're a battle picker as well, aren't they? Yeah. So unfortunately they won't be able to be used, at least in in this campaign, uh, as battle pickups are banned in GC. You never know, in future campaigns, things might change. I think there's a good idea to ban that one. I've seen um, at least two maps on Dragon's uh, Teeth that I've played on that those things have absolutely destroyed people. 
so next week, uh, Saturday, is the Battle for Initiative, or BFI. I'm sure a lot of people have heard a bit about this floating around in GC over the last few days or so. For those of you who don't know, uh, the winner of the BFI will be the person who takes the first attack week as the campaign gets going proper. So next week should be a relatively big event. I know we're working hard to get the uh, BFI up and running, so we smash those those horrible, horrible uh, Corleone family people. But yeah, well, obviously, that showed today, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, lull, lull you into a false sense of security. Well, except surrender now, it's not a problem. No chance. I mean, uh, maybe round two, Slough versus Fisher on, on the BFI. Or oh, at least for you. Everything to lose. I'll show you uh, how I actually FC. So I think that pretty much covers everything we had to talk about today. Uh, I've been a docile sloth. With me today we've had Captain Cart, Lake Fisher the One, and recording and editing as always, doing a brilliant job, is Mr. Blue. Uh, if you feel like it, head on over to www.global-conflict.org and come and join us in the fun.